Hi students, welcome to SPS University. This is Suresh Biology faculty. In the previous session, we discussed about the molecular basis of inheritance. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss about evolution. So, what is meant by evolution? So, evolution is a change. That is, which is inherited characteristics in the biological populations over successive generations. So it's a process to evolve. So this process gives rise to diversity at every level of biological organization. So every level of biological organization means taking from biomolecules to species. That is taking from proteins, DNA, individuals, molecules. At every level we can see evolution process. So evolution is not a process just limited to a particular level. At every level of organization we can see a diversity. So before going to evolution, so first we should study about the origin of universe. So universe has originated 20 billion years old and it is formed from huge that is it includes huge galaxies so which contain stars, clouds of gases and dust. To explain the origin of the universe, a theory was proposed that is, a theory explains, that is, Big Bang Theory, where it says that the universe has originated from huge explosion of very large entity. A large explosion has led to origin of the universe. And this universe whatever it is, it is expanding and there is a decrease in temperature and then formation of hydrogen and later on many gases like helium. Whatever the gases are formed, they undergo condensation. That is, they are condensed due to gravitation and form galaxies. So at present what you are seeing that is a condensed due to gravitation and these galaxies are present today in the universe. In universe earth is a part of it. So earth formation it has took 4.5 billion years ago. So when earth originated the water vapor, the atmosphere of earth is water vapor, methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide, which are released from the molten mass. So there is no oxygen. So this is called reducing atmosphere. As there is no oxygen, it is called reducing atmosphere. So on the earth, when earth is originated, there is no oxygen, only water vapor, methane, ammonia, carbon dioxide. Later on, due to ultraviolet rays which come from the sun, which broke the water into hydrogen and oxygen, there it has led to formation of oxygen. Okay. So here whatever the hydrogen is formed, hydrogen is heavier which is H2 which is lighter than the oxygen escaped from the surface. But whereas oxygen combined with other compounds that is methane and ammonia to form water and carbon dioxide. So that is Whatever the oxygen is formed, it is to combine with methane to form water 
as well as it is to combine with ammonia to form these carbon dioxide exit. So an intramolecular interaction has led to formation of different compounds. After cooling of water, that is the rain occurred, which filled all the depressions, that is, which led to formation of oceans and other water bodies. So here, so this has led to formation of water and later on rain and later on it has led to formation of ocean and water bodies. That is, if you take the sequence of formation of water bodies, initially oxygen, oxygen combining with ammonia, methane and to form water and carbon dioxide. After cooling, it has led to formation of that is rime, which has led to depressions, ocean and other water bodies. And later on, from oxygen, which has led to formation of ozone layer. So ozone layer is a very important layer in atmosphere which protects us from harmful radiations. It protects the earth from harmful radiations. So here, so life started on the earth 500 million years ago. Earth has originated 4.5 billion years ago and life has started 500 million years ago. That is about after billion years after life has formed on the earth. So that is first universe, next later on the origin of earth, later on the origin of life. So 4.5 billion years ago earth was formed, 20 billion years ago universe was formed and life has originated, started appearing 500 million years ago. To explain the origin of life, there are a lot of theories are proposed. Initially, they used to believe that God has created the life. That is, the theory of special creation says, according to this theory, the God who is considered supernatural has created the earth. Okay. The light, the plants and animals. <clears throat> So all living organisms are created by God, whatever the diversified is there. Okay. So according to theory of special, special creation, it says that God has created the life on the earth like plants, animals, okay, animals, whatever the microorganisms they are present, they are created by God. And later on after this theory of special creation, later on another theory has come that is theory of panspermia that is called cosmozoic theory. So what it says is according to them some spores has come to the earth from the space. For this from outer space the spores has come to the earth. So they might have lead to evolve into the present day forms. So what it says is from space whatever the spores has come, these spores has given rise to that is origin of life. Okay. It says that spores which has come from space, it has given origin of life. And next there is theory of spontaneous generation. So what it says is theory of spontaneous generation. It believes that living organisms has come from decaying matter suddenly, spontaneously. From decaying matter these living organisms has come. But it is not true. This was disproved by a person called Louis Pasteur. So according to Louis Pasteur, life arises from already existing, that is pre-existing life. And he has shown that also 
by using an experiment that is he has taken pre-sterilized closed flask okay where he has kept the heat kill yeast but new organisms arose from the heat kill yeast that was left open in the air so his pre-sterilized closed flask disproved the spontaneous generation theory so he has given a theory that life has come from pre-existing life by using the pre-sterilized closed flask experiments. Later on, it has given rise to theory of chemical evolution. So what it says is, the life has come from pre-existing molecules. That is organic molecules like RNA, DNA, protein, these all are organic. So life has come from the pre-existing organic molecules. And from where these organic molecules has formed, they are formed from the inorganic molecule constituents. So according to chemical evolution, Inorganic molecules has given rise to organic molecules and organic molecules has given rise to life. Okay. So what are the conditions? What are the conditions which favored the chemical evolution? Like very high temperature, volcanic storms, and the reducing atmosphere where there is no oxygen. So reducing atmosphere means there is no oxygen, only carbon dioxide, methane, ammonia, water vapor. The, this is called reducing atmosphere. So these conditions has favored the chemical evolution. Okay. So what is the proof that this chemical evolution has taken place? So here, Stanley Miller and Yuri, these two people has created conditions similar to primitive atmosphere. That is, in the lab they created the conditions which was similar to the primitive atmosphere. Similar to primitive atmosphere means with methane, ammonia, water vapor, carbon dioxide, etc and they created electric discharge using electrodes and at the temperature of 800 degrees that is previously when you take the high temperatures the reduced temperatures the volcanic storms and next the atmosphere has favored the chemical evolution of life to prove this experimentally we look after into what the experimental setup of this Stanley Miller and Dewey. What he has done. So he has taken a chamber that contains, that is where water is heated to provide water vapor. Okay. After that, what along due to this water vapor, after one week when what he has observed the formation of amino acids. Like Many other scientists have observed like Uri and Miller and the chemical evolution of life was accepted which was proved by Stanley and Miller. So if you see this setup of experiment, that is, this is boiling water, that is, water is heated up. So along with water we produce this heated water as it is having less density, it moves in this direction where the gases that is the methane, meth ammonia, water vapor, hydrogen and they are subjected to height that is electro electric discharge. After electric discharge when they are condensed due to condensation so water droplets are formed which gets accumulated here and if you see this accumulation in this we can see the formation of amino acids lipids such like so this is 
the diagrammatic representation of the Miller's and Urey experiment. So, whatever the water vapor comes from this boiling of water, it moves through this tubes and reaches to the electrode where discharge, spark discharge, electric discharge proceeds. So due to this spark discharge, the reaction takes place between water, ammonia, methane and hydrogen. And after condensation, it leads to formation of water. And this water gets here and when it is experimented, when this water analysis, chemical analysis is done, we can see the lipids, proteins, RNA, such like organic molecules. So it shows that from inorganic molecules, organic molecules has originated. <clears throat> okay, now organic molecules has originated. What has led to formation of the cell? So initially when you take the first non-cellular forms of the life originated 3 billion years before. So non-cellular life means there are molecules like RNA, proteins, polysaccharides. Polysaccharides means the carbohydrates. It is from organic molecule, that is from inorganic molecules, it has led to formation of organic molecules, RNA, carbohydrates, proteins. And these molecules are able to replicate or able to reproduce. Okay. So life forms, that is with cellular forms, has arisen just 2 billion years ago. And Whatever the life has originated, it has started with life form, started with single cell. So initially, single cell organisms has originated. And later on, it has led to multicellular complex organisms. Okay. And cell origin, the life originated in water. So what this theory says is, it is called theory of a biogenesis that is life has come through evolutionary forces from non-living molecules and these single cells whatever the single cells has come and these from this single cells it has led to formation of complex multicellular organisms it has led to formation of complex multicellular organisms. At present, the complex multicellular organisms has evolved from the single cell. <clears throat> okay. So here when you come to biological or organic evolution, what it says? So what it says is, it says to reference that is changes in the organisms or group of such populations or generations. That is, at present, whatever the organisms are there, there are lot of changes in the organisms which has led to the present generations. That is, it is called descent with modifications. So gradually, there are lot of modifications in the organisms according to the changing conditions. And these modifications at present, which we are seeing in living organisms. So when you come to history of health, so what earth is? What is earth? Okay. When you take the, the time scale of geological time scale, it can be divided into eras, periods and epochs. Okay. Whatever the rocks are formed are due to sedimentation, that is deposition of the material gradually. So when you take the cross section of the crust, we can see a lot of rocks which are deposited, sedimentation, and which reveals the long history of earth. Okay. When you go on digging the earth, we can find many organisms dead bodies that is the fossils of dinosaurs okay 
So we can find many remnants that is left out of the previous organisms like dinosaurs which are found towards upper layers they are modern that is recently originated which are found in deep they are simpler and older forms that means when you study the earth that is when you study the earth we can find out many things earth reveals about many things the simple forms the modern forms which was originated on the earth so here you can see a family tree of dinosaur okay so it has started with the that is with the see the lines of evolution stegosaurus has ended up with the triceratops and when you take brachiosaurus it has ended with the tyrannosaurus okay and one line has ended with the crocodiline crocodiles and another line has ended with that is it has led to evolution of birds or cryptorix okay crocodile stellar don't like this so this is uh, a family tree of dinosaurs which has led to the organisms like crocodiles and birds okay so dinosaurs has become extinct the line has ended up here so there is no further evolution but there is a further evolution in crocodiles the birds like which has led to formation of crocodiles birds okay so how to prove this okay for everything there should be an evolution whatever the say in science there should be evidence so how to prove this evolution so there are many evidences of for evolution like from paleontology paleontology means the study of fossils so fossils reveal a lot of aspects that is fossils will reveal lot of aspects which are found buried in the rocks and study of this fossils is called paleontology okay the fossils which are found in the deep of the earth which will represent the geographical time and from time to time there is a, a different change in the life forms and the new forms is appeared in the earth so when you come to these fossils you can see the fossils of different organisms here like the fish fossils the okay. fossils of various organisms so these fossils will reveal the origin of different organisms by study of fossils we can understand the evolution of different organisms for example if we take the origin of horse at present what you are seeing the horse is this one equus so this horse has act originated from the race mesohippus and later on mesohippus and later on pleohippus and at present what you are seeing that is equus the horse which you are seeing now by gradual modifications and changes in their life forms we can see a lot of changes here okay so this is how like for every organism there is a process of evolution that is a lot there are a lot of modifications in the organisms which has led to the present organisms so fossils in is one the best evidence and later on from embryology that is from by the study of embryos according to ns hekel biogenetic law what he says that ontogeny recapitulates the phylogeny that is when you see the embryological stages of organisms it shows the evolutionary history so according to ns hekel of biogenetic law it says that ontogeny it repeats the phylogeny the phylogeny means the evolutionary history it shows the evolutionary history when you study the embryos if you take the embryos of all the vertebrates like amphibians okay if you take the uh, <coughs> of all the vertebrates amphibians reptiles 
okay a is mammals if you take this if all the embryos of this if you take we can see the gill slits but they are not functioning all except in fishes as well as we can see the presence of notochord and presence of tile in the embryo no vertebrates okay so but this was discarded by Ernest von Boyer according to him embryos never pass through the adult stages of other animals according to van Baer, embryos never pass through adult stages of other animals okay so this embryological study if you see the embryos of the race if you take the fish a reptile a bird a human you can see the gill slits which is a common feature a tile which is a common feature <clears throat> embryology is one of the evidence for evolution so next come to the comparative anatomy and morphology that is, if you study the, the basic structure of each and every organs of different groups and you come across organs of different groups of organisms, they will show different functions. For example, what homology says? Homology says that when you study the organs of different groups, they are structurally seen. Their origin structurally seen, but functionally different. So the structurally same and functionally different, these are called homologous organs. For example, if you take the okay, so if you take the four limbs of that is the amphibian, that is the vertebrates all have the bone that is humerus okay radius and now corpels metacorpels the phalanges okay and if you take heart and brain of vertebrates tons of bougainvillea that is when you come to plant example tendrils their origin is same but functionally different so tons means which are pointed structure okay and tendrils these are it, tiny coil structures okay so this homologous organs will lead to divergent evolution even though their origin is same that is they are showing same structural different functions it shows they are common ancestry they have evolved from a common ancestor so they have evolved from common ancestor for example if you take the plants that is bougainvillea thorns which are meant for protection if you take cucurbita these are tendrils which are meant for the climbing function so both come from axillary buds but their function is different if you take the another example of homologous organs is that is if you take this that is the hind limbs of this one that is man, cheetah, whale and bait all have the same that is uh, humerus, radius and now metacorpal, scorpal, phalanges all have the same types of bones but functionally they are different and there is another one that is analogy so what this analogy says okay so this analogy says that when you study different groups of organisms their organs show same function but they are structurally different different structurally functionally same but structurally different so such type of organs are called analogous organs so what does this analogous organs show? It shows a convergent evolution. So when you take the examples like the tubers of sweet potato which are root modified and tubers of potato that is stem modified. But both of them store food. 
both of them will store food. This is root modification, this is stem modification, which leads to convergent evolution that is functionally same, structurally different. Okay. Here it is, sweet potato, which is a root modification. Potato is a stem modification. Here you can see the prickles, the stipules, spines, thorns, which are functionally, that is, they are same, but they are structurally different. These are analogous organs. When you come to animals, here when you take the insects, the wings of insects, and the wings of birds. So both wings of insects and both wings of birds are meant for flying. But they are structurally different. So wing insects are nothing but extension of integuments. But here it is modification of four limbs. So their origin and structure are different but functionally same. And we'll come to molecular homology. What is this molecular homology? It is whatever the molecular, the biomolecules present in living organisms, which represents the close relationship. For example, if we take the DNA, in DNA the molecule they are made up of nucle nucleotides. And if we study the proteins in apes and humans, they show similar relationships. That is, they show common ancestry. So here if you see the chromosomes of mouse and the humans. In mouse there are, that is if you take this, there are 20, in humans there are 23 pages. Whereas if you come to here there are 20. So we can see, we can see the comparative study of human chromosomes and mouse chromosomes. So here you can see, the amino acids which differ in hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein which is made up of amino acids. So if you see the difference of amino acids in the hemoglobin of humans, and if we start from humans, as it proceeds, the difference is gradually increasing. Okay. So here if you take monkey, mouse, chick, frog, amphibian, chick, apes, mouse, mammals, monkey, mammals, Okay, and when you come to the next one, if you see the difference of amino acids is gradually increasing. That is, as far as as the difference is more, as close, close the difference is less. And next, when you come to biogeography, that is, it stays about the geographical distribution of different groups of organisms on the earth. Okay. So there are many habitats where different organisms will be living. That is, habitat is a place where an organism is acquires its nutrients. That is functionally and it is habitat. So here you can see that is Sinonathus, which is located in Africa. You can see the geographical distribution of this. Listosaurus, its distribution is Africa to India, Antarctica. And if you see Mesosaurus, its distribution is Africa to South America. Okay. And if you take Glossopteris, its distribution is a wide distribution from South America to Africa, Africa to India, Antarctica, Australia. So the biogeographical study shows that is the really the relationship between organisms. Okay. Now we will study the theory of the natural selection which has changed the evolution study. And this was proposed, this was by Charles Darwin. So he has done, what he has done is, he made a sea voyage in a ship which is called HMS Beacon. Okay. And he visited an island and on the studies of this island, he has proposed some observations. Whatever the existing organisms are present, 
Okay. They share similarities among themselves. That is, the organisms which are present now, there are a lot of similarities between the organisms which are present at present. That means, they have originated many billions of years ago, but they have shown similarities. And there is a gradual evolution in the life forms. And there has been extinction to extinction means the living organisms has become extinct where they are now no further so they are not further and lot of variations are seen in the characters variations means changes in the characters and for survival organisms has shown that is in the nature, it has shown adaptations. That is, organisms to survive, they have shown a lot of adaptations. So, which has led to the changes, variations, the characteristics. Okay. That is, when you take the survival of the fittest, is due to the reproductive fitness. That means reproductive fitness means organism is able to reproduce more. Reproduce more means more number of progeny is produced, which has led to natural selection. Okay. And when you come to the two key concepts of uh, the Darwin theory, one it says is natural selection and another one is branching descent. What is this? Okay. So here when you come to this new forms of the life, it depends on the life cycle or lifespan of organisms. Okay. And survival of the fittest is a genetic basis. It is to evolve. We'll see some examples of natural selection. In UK, that is before industrialization. There is a change, and after industrialization, there is a change. That is, in England, if you see, before industrial revolution, he has observed moths. Moths means insects which live on the tea trunks, trees. Okay. There are two types of moths one is white, and another one is dull grey. Okay. They were present on trees. Okay. These trees are covered by lichens. Lichens is an association of algae and fungi. Okay. So these lichens are indicators of pollution. If there is no pollution, lichens can growth can be seen. Due to lichens, they are, the tree trunk is pale in color. Okay. As they are pale in color, the white moths are not easily visible. Whereas the melanized moths, that is the grey moths, are easily visible. Okay. That means before industrialization, the melanized, the dark moths are were less. Why? Because they are easily seen on the white background of lichens. That means their population is less. But when you come to white moths, their population is more. Okay. But later on, industrialization, industrialization means it has led to pollution. So due to this pollution, there is no lichens, lichens has disappeared. So when lichens has disappeared and due to soon, the tree trunk is dark in color. Okay. So dark mouth in the dark color of tree trunk, they, they are able to survive. But white moth, which can be easily seen by predators. So after industrialization, white moth population has decreased, dark moth population has decreased. That is, the color has brought the survival of the organisms, which increased the population. So here you can see, this is <coughs> the before and after. Before industrialization, after industrialization. This is unpolluted area. This is a polluted area. That means after industrialization. This is 
before industrialization where the more the white the more white color more population is more but whereas here after industrialization the dark color population is more so the conditions has changed this color has played a major role in the increase in population as well as there is an increase in this one we'll see the live examples at present what we are seeing nowadays we are using a lot of herbicides chemical based pesticides insecticides which has led to resistant varieties for killing mosquitoes we use ddt a chemical okay. like not only for killing mosquitoes even for diseases to cure diseases will be using a lot of antibiotics to kill the microorganisms and if you use this microorganism antibiotics frequently for a long time what will happen is they become antibiotic resistant okay it is due to the action of humans anthropogenic means as being humans we are using them which led to antibiotic resistant bacteria antibiotic resistant microorganisms so this process that is where due to anthropogenic actions and this process is called stochastic process so here humans are responsible for this if you use the antibiotics for long term the bacteria or the microorganisms they become resistant that's the reason why we should not use antibiotics for long term okay so based on chance events in nature and mutations in the organisms there is a lot of change in this okay. like the chance and the mutations has led to a lot of changes in the organisms like for example if we take adaptive radiations okay in which in this an ancestral stock that is one common ancestor and this one common ancestor has given rise to many group of organisms okay like for example if you see this darwin finches this darwin finches away actually they are called darwin finches is this was observed by darwin and galapagos during his voyage he has observed and on the island there are many varieties in the island in the galapagos island okay. so when he studied this galapagos island the darwin finches he has seen that there are many varieties of darwin finches but all these varieties of darwin finches has originated from that is a common ancestor the ancestor is that is the seed eating ancestor initially the darwin finches were seed eating later on due to changes they undergone adaptations when they undergo adaptations the shape of beak also changes so here you can see variety of beaks but depending upon their nutrition there is a change in the shape of the beak some are insect feeding some are plant feeding some are seed feeding like depending upon the change in the nutrition there is a change in the shape of the beak that means the variation that is change in the shape of the beak is a variation so which is nothing but an adaptation for survival of the fittest so for survival of the fittest the organisms has shown lot of adaptations and next example you can see adaptive radiation that is in australian marsupials okay which has evolved from a ancestral stock okay when more than one adaptive radiation appeared in this it is it led to conversion evolution so what adaptive radiation shows is it shows divergent evolution okay whereas if more than one adaptive radiation occurs it leads to 
in a particular geographical area it leads to a convergent evolution so what this convergent evolution says what is, this is an example of adaptive radiation this is more superior radiation which has given rise to different animals like tiger cat band eater marsupial rat kangaroo wombat bandicoot koala marsupial mole sugar glider tasmanian wolf this all has originated from one ancestral stock which is an example for adaptive radiation now we will come to what adaptive radiation says is it says about the divergent evolution what about this convergent evolution so here when we compare the placental mammals of australia they have evolved a parallel evolution with marsupial mammals so placental mammals and marsupial mammals are different lines of evolution okay but this marsupial and placental mammals they have shown a parallel evolution and why they are called parallel evolution means they show lot of similarities resemblances for example if the, the marsupial mole and mole they show resemblances of placental mammal numbat and anteater they show resemblances marsupial mouse mouse shows spotted cuscus lemur show similarities sugar glider the flying phalanger squirrel shows tasmanian tiger cat and bobcat show similarities tasmanian wolf and wolf of placent mammal show similarities so here you can see the diagrams mole marsupial mole anteater numbat mouse marsupial mouse lemur spotted cuscus flying squirrel flying phalanger bobcat tasmanian tiger cat wolf tasmanian wolf so they show the resemblances in some in some features which leads to the convergent evolution that means even though they arise from different ancestral stock they show similarities so they show similarities so after Darwin theory of evolution that is natural selection the branching descent later on the lamax theory of evolution what is this says it says about use and disuse of organs that is organs which we use the more they develop and the organs which we don't use they become functionless that is vestigial okay for example if you take the long neck of giraffe as they gone for long stretching of this neck they, this long neck has to okay and vestigial organs for example if you take our very big form appendix which has function in our ancestors but it has it is not a function function the same like external ear so but this lamax theory of evolution is not Okay, to some extent it is not acceptable okay so here when we come to mutations they play a major role in evolution on the basis of mutation mutation theory of evolution was proposed by hugo de vries and he has performed experiments on a plant called evening primrose so here you can see that is in this plant he has uh, observed a sudden change which has led to speciation and this sudden change which has led to speciation is called saltation saltation is a single step mutation which has led to the sudden change in which has led to speciation in a species So here, when you take the mutation of Darwin and the mutation of Hugo de Vries, there are there are very there are changes. That is, according to Darwin, they are small and directional. But according to de Vries, they are random and directional. They are large, random and directionless. 
According to Darwin, evolution is gradual process. It occurs by number of generations. But Hugo de Vries says it is a single step mutation which leads to speciation. Speciation means formation of new species from existing species. So formation of new species from the existing species. Okay. After Lamarck theory, Hugo de Vries and Darwin later on will study about that is the Hardy Weinberg principle. So what it says? What it says is when the conditions of stability, so the allele frequency of a population, so the allele frequency of population remains constant. That is when you take the allele frequency of a population, it remains constant. Okay, that is from one generation to other generation when stable conditions are performed, when there are stable conditions. Okay, but the allele frequency remains stable. That means the allele frequency always remains one. So this stability of genetic equilibrium is called Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium, which is proposed by Hardy and Weinberg. So when we come to this Hardy and Weinberg, when you take this Hardy and Weinberg, okay. So according to Hardy and Weinberg, the real frequency of a population remains constant. And according to this, there is an equation that is the sum total of all allele frequencies is represented by an equation that is p plus q square or p square plus 2pq plus q square is equal to 1. That means this is allele frequency is minus t. Any disturbance in the genetic equilibrium, that is any disturbance in the stability of a population, it will lead or any evolutionary change, it leads to change in the allele frequency. Like there are many factors which will affect how do you mean but equally. Like one is the gene migration. When individuals migrate from one population to other population, there will be change in the gene frequencies. Okay. So what happens is when individuals move from one to other, Sometimes that is when they move, this population will lost. There is some genes it will lost, and and this population which has where the individuals has migrated, it will gain. That is some genes were added here. Okay, if this migration continues, it is called gene flow. That is. The migration, if it continues like this, there is a gene flow from one population to other population. And another factor is the genetic drift. The random changes in allele frequency. Okay, here if you take, when there is a change in the allele frequency in the new species, that is if any species has migrated from one population to other population. So in this population, the species which has come, they are called founders. Okay. And the change in these founders, which reproduce with this existing population, they change the genotype and phenotype of the progeny. They are called founder effect. So it is called the founder effect. So due to this migrated the species, the which are called founders in the new population, they change the phenotype and genotype of the progeny. It is called founder effect. And next is mutations. These are sudden changes which are observed in organisms, okay, which cause speciation. Speciation means formation of new species from existing species. Recombination, that is, during meiosis, you can see a process called crossing over, which leads to, that is, the variations and ultimately which leads to new, new species. Natural selection, that is, where organisms show, that is, 
different adaptations according to the changing environmental conditions they show different adaptations which 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 are different from the original population so the gene flow genetic drift mutations recombinations natural selection will affect the hardy weinberg law <coughs> okay and when we come to the this effect of natural selection there are three effects one is stabilizing natural selection directional and another one is this so stabilizing means in which individuals acquire the mean character value that is variations of less directional means individuals will acquire other than the mean character value more individuals disruptive means the mean character value is lost and the extreme characters are attained so here you can see this is the stabilizing one where the variations are less this is the mean character value the organisms which are showing mean character value they are more in number this is directional where we can see the peak is moving towards one direction in this direction and it is this is disruptive where two peaks that is here you can see two peaks here the mean character value is lost but they have still there this is called disruptive uh <coughs> natural selection okay. so now we will come to history of animal evolutions so it has started from 2000 million years ago it has started from single cells later on it has gone to multicellular so first invertebrates has formed 500 million years ago, from this jawless fish 350 million years ago later on fishes with fins has arrived and there is a fish called silicone the low fin which is a relationship with the days it shows a relationship between that is the present day frogs and salamanders and later on we can see there are a lot of changes in all this Okay. Later on, fishes, amphibians, reptiles, apes, mammals has come into the world. And if you take the reptile part, that is, when you take um, dinosaurs, which has disappeared 65 million years ago. Okay, but still small reptiles continue to live. Okay, when reptiles have disappeared, mammals started dominating the earth. But as previously. there used to be that is reptiles used to dominate the earth later on mammals has dominated the earth when you take the mammals specifically when you take the mammals initially the mammals are small shrew like that is rat like organisms but later on they are given into giant complex one that is horse hippopotamus bear okay. and due to some geological changes like australian land which remained isolated which has given rise to pouched mammals pouched means the marsupial mammal the marsupials like kangaroo which can be seen specifically in only in australia <clears throat> so there is no competition from any other they survive and the same like the evolution is to horse elephant dog at present which you are seeing the well known one So here you can see the evolutionary history of fifty brains, which has started three fifty million years ago. Early reptiles, which has given rise to that is therapsids, which has become extinct. Another one, sauropsids, which has given rise to two lions. So dinosaurs has become extinct, which has there is no further line of evolution, but. the turtles lizards snakes tortoises crocodiles birds mammals okay. it depends on the epoch okay. 
And when you come to the history of evolution of plants, it has started 2,000 million years ago. They used to do photosynthesis. In this, the first one are bryophytes. Okay. Even see peels come under plants. Later on, from bryophytes, you can see pteridophytes. Okay. So, pteridophytes means the lycopodes. Okay. Just so film, silophyte, all these all are lycopodes. And later on, gymnosperms has dominated as arise. Okay. And after gymnosperms, next has come in the line of evolution is angiosperms. In angiosperms, the dicots and monocots. So here you can see this is chlorophyte, trichophyte, rhinia, rhinia type, and cellophyte, and these are the pteridophytes. So here you can see bryophytes, cenozoica. From this trichophytes, it has led to lycopodes, which are pteridophytes, horse tiles, pteridophytes, fans, jinkos, gymnosperms, conifers, gymnosperms, details, saccharide gymnosperms. From seed plants, it has given rise to angiosperm, that is dicotyledons and monocotyledons. At present, what you are seeing, the dicotyledons and monocotyledons. So now we are going to see about evolution of man. When you take the common ancestor of man, that is apes. So Dryopithecus, which has lived 15 million years ago. And later on, Ramapithecus has come into picture. Both look like that is hairy and walked like good lunging punches. When you take Dryopithecus, it is more like ape. And whereas when you come to Ramapithecus, it is more like man. Which is forerunner of human evolution. So you can see the skulls of Australopithecus, the chimpanzee and human. This is the skull of human. This is chimpanzee. This is Orington, Meta. Where the skull of uh, the chimpanzee is more has more similarities with the humans. When you take Australopithecus two million years ago. And the brain capacity is 450 to 600 cubic centimeters. So they used to eat fruits, they used to hunt with stones. And when you come to Homo habilis, this first human like that is hominid, the brain capacity is 650 to 800 cc. They also didn't eat meat, they used to eat fruits. So this is our student with your silica. Homo habilis. So, 40 centimeters away. Later on, Homo erectus, which is found in Java, they probably existed 1.5 million years. That is the end that is. They used to eat meat. And next is Homo sapiens, which are found in Central Asia, East and Central Asia, which are found that is 1 lakh to 40,000 years before. In this, that is Neanderthal man, Neanderthal cis, which has brain capacity of 1400 cis. So, this is Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, Homo sapiens, in this Neanderthalus, Homo sapiens. At present, what you are seeing this is the Homo sapiens sapiens, modern man. Okay. With the modern man used to live 75,000 to 10,000, that is, years ago. He used to learn, cultivate plants, domesticate animals. And prehistoric came out about 18,000 years before. He has started agriculture 10,000 years back ago. So where he started human settlement and civilization story. So here you can see a gradual evolution. Australopithecus, Homo habilis, Homo Actus, Homo sapiens, Neanderthalus, Homo sapiens, sapiens. Okay, so you can see. Thank you all. Let's follow us on social media. Once again, welcome to SPS University. <coughs> Thank you. We'll meet us in the next class.